Good afternoon, everybody. This is Terry Golightly hosting this session on Karuda 3.0 with uh, Dr. Jacques Renault and uh, Dr. Jenna Smith. Jacques Renault is team leader at ePortfolium, a small Canadian co op dedicated to support organizations implementing ePortfolios. He is also an honorary professor at HEC Montreal and chair of the Karuda Open Source Portfolio Governing Board at the Aperio Foundation. He has extensive experience in implementing technological learning tools for learning and assessment in North America and Europe. Dr. Janice Smith leads the steering committee for the Karuda Open Source Portfolio Project. Now retired, she has consulted- Oh, she's just really perfect the bon timing. Uh, now retired, she has consulted with an extensive list of universities around the globe on the implementation of electronic portfolios to support learning, assessment, showcasing, and career development. She has a doctorate in linguistics from the University of Minnesota and decades of experience teaching English as a second language, developing the communication skills of international teaching assistants, and preparing future faculty for teaching and the faculty role. Go for it. If you want to ask questions, please enter them in the chat um, and we'll take care of them as they come up. Okay, Jacques and Janice. So welcome to the session entitled, entitled Karuda 3.0 is also an open source presentation e-portfolio tool. I'm Janice Smith from Minnesota, USA and my colleague Jacques Renault is here from Quebec, Canada. We represent the Karuda Open Source Portfolio Project as well as its portfolio of commercial affiliate ePortfolium, both of which support an open source ePortfolio application currently in use in Europe, North America, and Japan. In this session, we'll introduce you to Karuda and outline its unique features as a WordPress for ePortfolios. Then we will demonstrate how students use Karuda to create presentation portfolios and how easy it is to build a Karuda presentation portfolio template for your students using Karuda 3.0. First, an introduction to the Karuda open source portfolio. Karuda has deep roots in what were called the open source portfolio tools in Sakai. Like Sakai, Karuda is licensed through the Aperio Foundation. The Karuda project was founded and continues to be sustained by the contributions of three universities and our commercial partner, ePortfolio. It is governed by an international board with members from five different countries. Besides being open source, Karuda is LTI ready and has a responsive design for easy use in tablets. Next, thank you. Karuda is multilingual, allowing operation in any language and in multiple language if desired. Administrators can create and share templates for Karuda for any portfolio purpose or for learning processes beyond the portfolios. Full documentation is included with a Karuda download, but for those who need assistance, the commercial affiliate ePortfolio based in Canada is available to help. Next slide. Plan your portfolio process as precisely as you can and then use Karuda to organize different resources, which can consist of text, documents, rubrics, comments, or other objects. And then according to a work You, via a user interface, design attractive and uh, supportive interfaces for your users. Next slide. A key to success with Karuda is to phase in your portfolio iteratively. We recommend that you first meet with your stakeholders many times to listen to their plans, needs, and objectives. Then develop a portfolio prototype that is based on their needs, including the Karuda design interface, use, using a Karuda design interface. And then conduct a portfolio pilot before you go into full production. The pilot would, would allow you to incorporate stakeholder feedback and requests for revision in an iterative fashion. 
If you follow these important steps to create a portfolio, your results are most more likely that students, faculty, and administrators will use and appreciate the portfolio, portfolio you have created. Next slide. Sure, sorry. The New Brunswick Theological Seminary in New Jersey, USA, in conjunction with the LAMP Consortium, offers a great example of Karuta integration with Sakai. NBTS uses Karuta for purposes of assessment and accreditation. Students complete a profile before assessing the learning outcomes for their specific graduate program in theology. Then using a menu, students upload various multimedia artifacts to provide evidence of their learning in relation to each learning outcome. For each artifact, students are asked to document when and where the artifact was produced and summarize what it contains. They then complete the upload for each artifact by reflecting on the relation of the artifact to the learning outcome to which it has been linked. Finally, evaluators assess student work and administrators use Karuta reports to assemble assessment data and report it to, to their accreditors. Next. Karuta can be thought of as a WordPress for ePortfolios because uh, it, in using Karuta, you start with a bl blank page, you add sections and resources, you set roles for each, each use of a section and resource, and you determine the, experience, the appearance of each section and resource. This will result in your own unique portfolio template with your own unique look and feel. Version 3.0 of Karuta builds on the strength of 2.4, but adds powerful user interface design features. Using Karuta 3.0, users can control the type of content they use and how the content will look. This innovation has tremendous impact on acceptance and usability. So in this slide, uh, the Karuta portfolio template that we call the pandemic portfolio dis demonstrates the flexibility of designing portfolios with 3. Karuta 3.0. This is the welcome page with artwork created by a member of the Karuta board. The concepts in this use case were inspired by our e-portfolio experience and by the frustration many students have uh, regarding the limitations the pandemic has placed on their educational opportunities. The pandemic portfolio asks students to recognize what they have accomplished thus far in spite of the pandemic to familiarize themselves with the lifelong learning skills rubrics developed by Jill Jensen and Paul Troyer and made available through their 2014 article in Change Magazine. To use these rubrics to self-evaluate their learning as represented by the evidence they upload and their documentation and reflection on that evidence, and then uh, present their learning to using the a presentation template to instructors, peers, mentors, family, and potential employers. Students create that presentation portfolio by using Karuta to choose the content they want to include and they, the way they want the content to appear on the page. Last slide. Oh, this slide, yes. Karuta designers, that's you if you're using Karuta for your students, set up the appearance of the portfolio template so that, that their students will use to create their presentation portfolios. You would do this by assessing the same features you can, that you allow students, the same features that you access to allow students to choose how they will present their information. So what, what we're saying is the same tools you use to set up the template can be offered to students to create their own presentation within that template. For example, the welcome page of the pandemic portfolio that you might create contains a single block with a choice of background image and text. That's the blue background for my pandemic e-portfolio. And below that, another single block containing three smaller blocks. 
And finally below that, or uh, within a, one of those blocks, a smaller block with a title, image, and text. With Karuta 3.0, portfolio designers can choose to offer these same choices to their students as they construct, for the students to construct their presentation portfolios. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Jacques to take a deeper look into creating present portfolio, presentation portfolios using Karuta. Thank you, Janice. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I just want to stress quickly uh, about uh, presentation portfolio because we did a presentation once and this is something that career centers uh, are really pushing forward for students is how to connect the curriculum to their future, future career. And it's really hard to get a, a, a good survey of all what's happening on the presentation portfolio side, but usually students are invited to reflect on their journey and their future. Uh, E-portfolios are not mandatory, but are strongly recommended. And uh, usually career services will, pre will offer templates. Like for example, uh, at University of South Florida, there is a, uh, I've been following this initiative for a long time and they have a, they sort of use career portfolio uh, in this way. Uh, there are many tools available, obviously. Uh, some are proprietary and some are really open source like WordPress. And they are very, very flexible, but maybe a little bit hard to use. But the problem is that in, uh, using proper tools can be costly, especially uh, university in, in the pandemic time are, are really short on cash. Uh, and if you want to move, and if you want to add assessment or accreditation in, the, uh, in your portfolio, they're sort of stuck with usually they, they do presentation portfolio and they're not as flexible for the rest. And one thing that is really key in Kauta can do is this uh, uh, of report is that since it's a Karuta portfolio, it will be able to, you will be able to conduct reports and sort of see how students have been using it and maybe, uh, and maybe help if, the, if you can foresee some, some issues. So Karuta 2.4, we did a couple uh, presentation portfolio, but they were really uh, geared towards uh, resume building, like one in HSC Montreal, where you ask for you know professional experience and you generate uh, uh, a short resume and things like that. Uh, we we did the same in France uh, with another uh, approach uh, with Carota with uh, at Grenoble uh, in France, and they had to ex uh, list their experience, uh, reflect on it. But it, it's not really a presentation portfolio in the sense that it's been used in the US where students have, are much more uh, command on what they want to do. So what we uh, say about presentation portfolio is that uh, if you wanna have a success, you have to sort of provide upfront some kind of rational. You have to make it very simple to use. The design has to be attractive. So students can sort of own their portfolio. They can sort of tailor, make it their own. You, pro, you, you do have to provide guidance. Uh, ideally, you should be, let students be able to share their portfolio. And as I said before, it, it would be a good thing if you can track a little bit student activity and sort of see uh, what are the, the, the views and what, what's the difficulties there. So in Karuta, it's very, very simple because students are going to, to take up the role of designer, uh, but not the full designer because it's a bit too complicated, but uh, you will be able to sort of offer specialized templates. So they will be able to sort of be sort of designer, but with sort of a reduced set of uh, features. And the nice thing about that is you're, your presentation portfolio can sort of have some, have some fixed aspect or can be left completely open. So you have, you have complete control over that. So uh, I'm going to show you stuff that it's a work in progress. So we have to find the right balance between uh, the full uh, sophisticated func functionalities of, of a Karuta designer versus student designer that 
need some tools, but you have to keep it simple too. So we're trying to work out this balance right now to sort of see what's uh, what should uh, go best. So I'm going to go quickly here because I'm going to show you that uh, uh, a little bit later on. So uh, students, as a designer, what they will do is they will be able to add sections, one, two, three column sections, and they will be able to add resources. This is what I'm going to show you. So I'm going to do a demo, so be indulgent. I'm not a web designer, so maybe you, you won't like my colors, and I'm not, I'm not sure I'd want to do that too much. So here I am here. Uh, I'm going to, I'm in Karuta right now. I'm going to put the student role here. So this is a welcome page. This is my sort of uh, portfolio as a student uh, uh, living in Budapest. So I, it's fun. Presentation portfolio make you dream a little bit. So this is my portfolio. And here in, in Karuta, so I can click on edit because I, I, I sort of remove the edit screen and this is the, the portfolio that people are going to see. So you can see that I can have some flexibility. I can put my picture there. This is a, a, an image with some text over it, we call that. And then I sort of created the sections with uh, three different, uh, it's a one, it's a three column sections with three different text field in it. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, let me go sh show you the README first. Uh, again, it's very preliminary. It's this been done by the full designer to sort of help students make sense of the presentation portfolio. But look at the different, look at the, the sort of colors you can use. Uh, you can put images there. It's an image there. Here it's a, a text with a larger font. And this is a text here with uh, sort of regular font, but the color is slightly different. Again, I'm not a great designer, but uh, it sort of gives you some sort of possibility that uh, the, the designer did actually, but the students could do as well. Here on top is the sort of structure of this uh, presentation portfolio. Currently, it's something that it's uh, sort of fixed. Uh, it's like the university is saying, well, we'd like all the students' portfolio to have the same structure. There will be trend, coursework, leadership, and work experience, study abroad, resume and contact information. But of course, it can be changed. And, and more than that, you can, you can give it to the students if you want that. So let me move to strength here. Uh, I just... Uh, I'm going to come back as a designer, as a student, okay? So here you, you will see now, since I'm a designer student, I have access to uh, tools like I, I can edit, for example, the title here, Leadership and Community Project. This is a title of this sort of section. It's a two column section about leadership in a community project. And what the student can do is they can add resources here. They can add a document block, a URL block, uh, linking to a website, an image block, a text field block, an embedded block, uh, and, and, and etc. Uh, this is an uh, embed. This is this is a link to a video. Here it's um, it's a URL. Um, so a block. It means there is an image, and then I can sort of. Uh, uh, I can sort of uh, write some kind of text to sort of explain why uh, I'm, I'm where this uh, this uh, this is going to go. Again, uh, another sections with two columns with text, and this is a, a document here. Results on my test, and here it's uh, another test results that I put. Again. What's nice is that the students can really personalize uh, their portfolio with uh, nice images and different colors. They can match that and they sort of can sort of present themselves. Here, there's uh, something on coursework. Uh, I can sort of present. Here, you have a three column section and I can present the textbook I use, uh, maybe uh, what the, the course was about and some kind of link to the course website or something like that. Uh, work experience. 
uh, it's a it's a four column sections here uh, where I sort of uh, put a, a picture of uh, I did a, I did some work at the campus bookstore so I, I put a picture of the campus bookstore I sort of put a, a link to my project it's a document here I don't I sort of explain what I did here and I this is an image that's sort of linked to the campus book stores so I'm going to go to the study abroad sections and I'm going to sort of from scratch uh, create uh, something for you. So uh, here I have a couple examples of study abroad. So I'm going to replicate one. And here I'm going to create a, a two column section. Okay. So it's going to go like this at the end. And I'm going to change that and I'm going to put the University of Buenos Aires. Okay, so I have my section created. It's a two column section. Then I can, let's see, add uh, an image here. And I'm going to pick an image uh, to sort of put on my block. And uh, I should have ch checked that before. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to go there. And uh, sorry. I'm going to get an image of the University of Buenos Aires um, that I have somewhere. Where is it? OK, here is it. Okay, and then I can sort of write down, this is a sort of image of the University of Buenos Aires that I put there. I want to add uh, uh, some text to sort of explain what I did at the University of Buenos Aires. So I'm going to add the text field here. And I'm going to do, I, I did a nice uh, uh, stay. Uh, I'm going to copy that over because uh, just to fill it up. Whoops. Okay. And then I'm going to change the, the background color because I can change here the background color of this. I can, let's say, put a nice blue here. I can. So I have a, I have a nice blue here. So I can change the, si the size of the font if I want. I can come here in resource and maybe put a font size uh, at 100%. Of course, there are some things that we have to explain to the student, but uh, you see the font is a little bit uh, bigger there. Uh, I could add a, a document block because maybe I did some kind of work over there and I want to, I did a report on, on a, a barrio, la, la Boca. So I'm going to get a, um, a document block here. I'm good. So again, it's it's sort of, and it's sort of, it sort of uh, gives a student some kind of flexibility, but uh, it, it sort of makes it sort of simpler. It's not, and I'm going to add this uh, image here. Uh, this is a barrio. Uh, you'll see there then there, there will be an image there and I will add I will add the document here so I'm going to choose the document and uh, let's say it's a it's a phony document but whatever I have a document here and then I'm going to uh, come back and maybe change the this the title here to say this is my report uh, here the label of course, there will be some guidance for students, but there are not that many things to see. My report on uh, Boca uh, Barrio. Okay, so you see, so again, of course, there are some, the students will have to learn a couple things about this, but it's, it's pretty much the same mechanism for everything, for the text, for the, uh, the image text for the for the document for the URL. So 
So this is sort of the way you sort of build gradually your, your portfolio by sort of having these blocks put together. Uh, sometimes it can be a three, and as I showed before, it can be a, a four column box. And then you can, you can have as many of those if you want. So it's sort of, you can present many aspects of, of what you want to show for the showcase. So I think I'm going to- We've got five minutes. Yeah, and, and maybe uh, ask uh, if people have questions. Maybe I've been, I've been going a little there, bit too there fast. There haven't been any questions yet. Okay. So this is a good time for questions, folks. Okay, so I can continue. So, yeah, so if I want to reflect coming back to the, the, welcome, the welcome page on, on this kind of, um, yes? I, I was just saying you were breaking up a bit. I, I want to ask if you have uh, worked out a way for students or fa for faculty to um, address uh, accessibility and um, headers and that kind of thing for um, special needs users? Yeah, that's an excellent question. This is something that uh, uh, we're sort of, we moved to Karuta 3.0 version and uh, we've been working really hard uh, to sort of get something uh, available, but this is the next step. And fortunately, uh, one of our team leader, Olivier Gerbet is, is uh, is, is fully aware of that. And, and the way Karuta is sort of set up, uh, it, it is something that uh, we will have to sort of tackle in, in the very sure, near future, sort of uh, make sure that uh, uh, everything is, uh, is, uh, is accessible. And uh, this is a sort of next, uh, this is the next step that uh, we're going to sort of uh, work on it. That's when a good. Will that's a good point. Uh, well, what I'm showing you is uh, still in, in beta version, so okay. it's just to show you some kind of uh, it's a it's a preview of what's going on. Okay. So we should have like this version uh, available in the uh, beginning of 2021. But for the accessibility, this is something that uh, we'll, we'll sort of tackle very soon because it's going to be used quite a bit in France. Not, prob prob not the presentation portfolio, but some kind of accreditation or assessment portfolio, yeah. like the pandemic portfolio. And um, uh, these issues are going to be raised for sure by the French universities. So this is something that we'll have to, to address very soon. Thanks for... This is a very important question. I guess Sakai is pre. Uh, this is a very important issue for the Sakai community. I'm not. I don't remember when I was using Sakai. If at the time it was sort of fully uh, accessible, but I'm sure it, 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 it sort of moved forward. Well, like with the whole thing, accessibility is a moving target. But um, but there's a constant effort to stay up with it. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and the issue is really about uh, making sure that images are really described and, and so people who don't see that can have a, 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 a sort of audio description of what's going yeah. on. That and your heading styles and that kind of thing have to be ARIA tagged and, that, and whatnot so that screen readers can discern. Exactly. And, uh, and, uh, and the nice thing about Karuta is it's really tag oriented. So Good. it's it's very very easy for us to sort of uh, work on that. But as usual, and I must confess that this is something that you tackle maybe a little bit later. We should have done that a little bit earlier, but this is something that uh, we haven't done yet. Does anybody else have questions? We're just a minute or so out. Jacques, is there more? Yeah. Jacques, can yes. you toggle, toggle what we're looking at to show what happens when all the design things make, make it look like the final product? I mean, when a student, when, uh, yeah, when it's uh, with no, um, yeah, right. this is the sort of, uh, I, I'll show you the page that I've done on, uh, oops, uh, study abroad. 
Yeah. So all the the uh, nav, um, production features are gone. Just just a different, slightly different look and feel. That's what the final. So this is. Go ahead. Yeah, this is what the. I mean, the the actual uh, outside viewer. I mean, uh, uh, will will see. Actually, I didn't show that, but it's it's very easy for the students to share his his or her portfolio with someone else. I think this is exciting stuff um, for people who are really into showing student productivity and potential, showing what they've done in their program and showcasing their learning and their and their mastery of their courses and their programs. So this yeah. is really exciting. Yeah, and the goal again was to, to I mean, uh, give to students some kind of tools that will let them, if, even if they're not that good with web design, something that that can look nice if they choose nice pictures and they change they choose the right colors they don't have to be real designer so that's that's the the, the nice part of it and the, the other part is that it's it, it works also with other Carolta aspects like assessment and everything so if you get you get a full tool that can address all your needs with portfolios now so this is where we're really proud to show that not sure that people are going to use it they, they're more interested in assessment, sometimes in accreditation, but it it's it's available now and it's, well, it, we're know, really excited. I, I know that in Kentucky in education, you have to have an, a portfolio of your learning and your praxis and that kind of thing. And in nursing, the same thing. And sometimes the students were coming up with four inch thick binders of documentation and pictures. And if you can put it online and really make it available for future employers, they're, they're ahead of the game. Exactly. And you can sort of tailor it uh, to make sure that, for example, the structure of the portfolio is right for the different uh, discipline. I know in nursing, maybe it's a little bit different and maybe for business, it will be a little bit different education. So yeah, the, the university has some kind of uh, control over how it can be structured or it can be left completely open to students. It's up to them. Well, thank you very much for this presentation. Okay. Fascinating Thank stuff. you so much. And thank you, thank you to thank everybody you. for attending. Okay, thanks. Uh, Janice? Yes, very nice work, Jacques. Um, yeah.